What's up everyone? Okay, so when they first announced these MCU shows coming to Disney Plus and they listed all the names, Loki was the one that stood out as the one I was least interested in. Loki to me never really was that interested in the character or villain and his distrustful nature was annoying so to have a show focused primarily on him I just wasn't that interested. However, the more I heard about the show and after seeing the trailers my interest was piqued. Now that it's available, please tell me why this show has become one of my favourite things to come out of the MCU. The criminal could be anywhere, anytime. You gotta be careful. Anything we do can impact the course of history, you get that? Loki! Loki! Loki picks up after the events of Endgame and sees the God of Mischief apprehended by the TVA or Time Variance Authority for disrupting the timeline. Obviously the last time we saw Loki in the movies, he stole the cosmic cube and slipped away which wasn't something that should have happened in the current MCU timeline. Spoilers, he dies. So in the first couple of episodes we're given a lot of information to take in about time, how timelines work, about the TVA and just about who Loki really is as a person. By the third episode we really see the show starting to flex its muscles a bit and we get some stunning visuals, great character interactions and action set pieces. Watching this show from beginning to end had a very Doctor Who feel to me, travelling to different worlds, different times, it just felt like a very big budget version of Doctor Who and I loved it. I could even see Tom Hiddleston playing that role perfectly. And that brings me to the next point, which is that the show has a great cast and seeing Tom and Owen Wilson having their back and forth moments was great to watch. Sophia DiMartino who plays Sylvie and Wunmi Masaku as B15 who was also most recently in Lovecraft Country both play great characters that you just love to see when they're on the screen. Sylvie and Loki's relationship is one of the big driving forces behind the plot and this really showed Loki in a completely different, although narcissistic light. There was much more emotion in this show than I thought there would be. Seeing Loki let down his guard to be more than just the god of mischief added that much needed depth that I always wanted from the character. And yes of course, obviously the person that Loki falls in love with is pretty much himself. Well, what did you expect? Now throughout the show there have been little hints as to who might be in charge of the TVA and we find out that the timekeepers are no longer around and by the fifth episode there was no doubt that this person was indeed Kang the Conqueror. Okay so who is Kang? To give a very short and simplified version of who he is, Nathaniel Richards, which is his real name, is from the 31st century and has basically mastered the art of time travel. Now it gets a bit confusing as there are many different versions who also have different names and exist at different points of time, from being Pharaoh Ramatut in ancient Egypt to being Immortus who rules at the end of time. And that's a simplified version and it gets very confusing, don't even get me started on his link to Reed Richards. Alioth, Ravona, Renslayer, the Timekeepers, Kang Tower, which is owned by a different version of Kang or Nathaniel Richards, were also major giveaways as to who might be calling the shots here. But after seeing WandaVision, I was having doubts that we would see Kang in this series, which after all is called Loki, and instead we would get another version of Loki being the big bad at the end of the show. We do know that we will be seeing Kang played by Jonathan Majors in the next Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, Quantumania. So I was a bit hesitant to believe that they would put him in this show. We are also introduced to many more Lokis throughout the series. Richard E. Grant, you can tell, was having a lot of fun playing classic Loki. But it also shows us that Lokis will always turn on each other and is what also made me think that the show may go down this route of using another Loki who waits at the end of time and is trying to get rid of the other Lokis somehow or something to that end. By the last episode though, my mind was blown because I didn't see it coming. I wasn't going to have another Mephisto moment where the show sets up little hints here and there only for the villain to be revealed as someone who was there all along. But there he was, Jonathan Majors playing Kang or probably Immortus, he who remains at the end of time. Again, I think Majors did a great job of bringing the character to life on screen. He was a warier version of himself who has seen everything that has happened and that is to happen up to a certain point. So the timeline is a mess, the show ends with Loki being at the TVA but realising he's in a different timeline. It's all exciting stuff. All in all, what did I think of Loki though? 
Is it the best Disney Plus show that has been released so far? I think in terms of execution and storytelling, it is a bit more focused being that it revolved mainly around Loki and there weren't any episodes that tried to fill in the gaps for other characters, like we've had with WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So everything was just more streamlined, it got to the point quicker and even though with the whole timeline and variant ideas, things just seemed simple to digest, at least for me anyway. And that's what you want from a show that only has 6 episodes, something that's straight to the point, no fillers. I think Loki was creative, entertaining, funny and really opens up the MCU as a whole to so many possibilities. We know that the next MCU project to be released will be the What If series and Loki ties right into that. Different timelines with different character interactions and consequences. I love that idea. It will also be great to see Jonathan Majors returning as Kang the Conqueror in Quantumania because he will probably be a much different version of the one we were introduced to in this series. So yeah, I'm looking forward to season two. There's lots more to come. What do you think of the series? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching. You know what to do, hit that like button and I'll catch you next time.